Hello everyone and welcome to No Man's Land Studio. My name is Matt and today we are going to be painting a 28mm Roman miniature from the Hail Caesar Gallic Wars starter set from Warlord Games. This box set is lovely and comes with 48 late Republican Roman infantry and 80 Gallic infantry, as well as some high quality supplements to get you started. In this video we're going to paint one of the Roman figures holding a pilum, a type of javelin used by the Romans known for its distinctive design and effectiveness in battle. To start with, I tend to focus on the metals first, as I like to dry brush metallic paints, and this isn't always the most accurate technique, so I get the metals out of the way before moving on to the rest of the model. For the chainmail and the tip of the javelin, we're going to start by coating this with lead belcher, a solid baseline for dull metals and silvers. After that, we apply a diluted wash of Nuln oil to the lead belcher areas. Add a small amount of medium or water to the wash so that we can keep control and don't dull the metal down too heavily. Once that is dry, apply another light dry brush with the lead belcher, picking up the raised areas. And finally, we apply another light dry brush of Rune Fang Steel to add a subtle highlight to the raised areas and really help the areas to pop out. Next up, we will focus on the bronze areas, which includes the helmet, edge of the shield and the edge of the gladius and dagger scabbard. To do this, we are going to base coat the bronze areas with Balthazar Gold. Once this is dry, apply a shade of Agrax Earthshade to the bronze areas. After the Agrax Earthshade dries, we are going to dry brush Vallejo Brass over these areas. Then we are going to add some Runevang Steel to the brass to apply our highlight dry brush. Focus on the edges and upper areas. Less is definitely more here. I also realised that I missed the upper section on the pilum, so I just went back through the process to get this part done as well. Let's move on to the flesh. This is a really important part of the process, and to offer a more bronze flesh such as I'd expect the Romans to have, as opposed to the paler skin of the Gauls and the Britons, I've decided upon the following paints for my Roman flesh tone. They are Vallejo Light Rust, Brown Sand and Basic Skin Tone. We are going to build these layers up, starting with the Light Rust, applying it in several coats to all of the flesh areas. Then we are going to layer Brown Sand over the base coat. Brown Sand is a really good fit for Romans, as it's slightly darker than say Flat Flesh or other Caucasian skin tones, and complements the light rust well. Layer this in, leaving the deep areas behind to depict the shadows. Then add basic skin tone and mix it with the brown sand. It's not an exact science, but say 70% brown sand and 30% basic skin tone. Then you want to focus on the bridge of the nose, knuckles, ears, elbows, and any high points. Lastly, add more basic skin tone to the mix, with maybe 10% brown sand this time and 90% basic skin tone. And this time, pick out the very tip of the nose, edge of the knuckle, and really extreme points. This stage is optional, but it's worth learning to do as the model really stands out if you do. Now let's look at the tunic. We're going for an off-white or cream colour, and this can be difficult to go from a miniature that's been primed in a dark colour, such as this one. So I like to build up in stages again. We start by base painting the clothing in a rocky sand. Next we layer with pale sand. And finally we highlight with off-white focusing on the edges and raised areas.
the horse hair on the helmet should be black. So after ensuring that it is base coated in black, you can dry brush it a lighter grey colour. I went for German grey. Now we proceed to base coat all of the leathers and woods with Vallejo flat brown. I also paint the shield with this colour as it's going to be easier to build up from flat brown as opposed to painting straight onto black. To paint the wood areas on the javelin and the sword and dagger handle, we layer with beige brown. I then add a small amount of Iraqi sand to the beige brown to act as a highlight, but this is optional. For the leather belts and sandals, I went for Vallejo Game Colour Leather. Again, if you feel confident, you can add some Iraqi sand or a flesh tone to the leather to act to pick out the edges and provide a highlight. We will cover these more advanced techniques in more detail in later videos. It's time to paint the shield. I start by applying scarlet red all over the shield, leaving the very edges behind in the flat brown. I then apply two to three coats of bloody red. Layer this up gradually, allowing the last coat to dry before applying the next. Now I'm going to paint the yellow on the shield. We could do this in the bronze colour we did at the beginning of the video, but I opted for yellow to match up, match up with the decals provided in the box set. Yellow is notorious for being very transparent and can be very difficult to paint with. To help me, I apply a coat of tan yellow, which really helps any yellow colour you apply afterwards. Top tip here, if you wish to paint yellow on a miniature, apply tan yellow first. Game changer. You're welcome. Now that the tan yellow has dried, we're going to layer Game Colour Moon Yellow over the top. Our base coat ensures that this colour stands out and only needs a few thin coats. That's the basics done. Our model is now painted to a good standard and will look striking on the tabletop. There are a few more things we can do, however, to really complete this model. 
In our next part of this tutorial, we should look at, at applying decals to the shield, as well as applying some damage and shading to the shield, as well as some basing techniques. I hope you have enjoyed this video. We have utilised some basic techniques, as well as highlighting to achieve a nice tabletop finish. Please consider subscribing to the channel, where we will feature more videos like this in the future. Stay tuned for part 2. Thanks very much for watching. Take care.